It's your family tree, a mystery. Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip, hip, hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In cut-off genes. <laughs> Welcome to Cut-Off Genes, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon-Jackson, and I'm a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a gen genie. And I am Richard Castle, the co-host and producer of this podcast. And I'm sweating today, Julie. How about you? Um, My forehead is falling off. We are in the dog days of summer. At least that's what my dog told me. Yes. He said, it's my days. (laughs) Yeah, you got a little sunburn there. Yeah, I got a little sunburn. What happened? I was in the sun. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. No, we went, we did our annual glamping extravaganza. And I sat in the sun for an hour reading, which is something I never get to do. Um... Which was lovely, and my forehead, or five head as we like to call it, <laughs> uh, was exposed because I had my hair in a top knot and uh, just burned it to a crisp. <laughs> didn't you put on sunscreen? No, I didn't. It was kind of hazy. I got the I worst know. sunburn of my life on a cloudy day in Toronto, I hear way you. up north. Well, you know, you're much closer to the sun there. I, well, who knew? I just figured, you I know. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> it's just, well... Whatever it is, I didn't expect to get burnt to a crisp in mm-hmm. Toronto. Yeah. So no, far who north. Does? Who gets burned in Toronto? I Well, I did, apparently. And you okay. did without any sunscreen. I know. There's a little public service announcement, listeners. Wear always, your sunscreen. Wear, wear your, and always count your change. Oh. oh, and also, I brought, my daughter said, Mom, you have to get more sunscreen. I'm like, we have five bottles of sunscreen in the house. I found all five of them. And and packed them, and then my my daughter looks and she goes, "Mom, every single one of these is expired." <laughs> Does sunscreen expire? Apparently so. I don't believe in expiration dates personally. <laughs> Did I tell you about the time? This is a little blue. All right, I'm just gonna. This a is a little, a little okay. warning to our listeners. This story is a little blue. Oh boy! But I was at a street festival out in L.A. You know, just walking around, and people. There's always vendors handing you pamphlets and samples and food and you know everything. And they handed me this little packet, um, like this little plastic packet of sunscreen. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh good, because I don't want to oh. burn. So I open it up, like I twist off the top and you I squeeze told it. Me this yes, story. and I rub it on my face, and I keep rubbing, and it won't rub in. <laughs> yeah, it turned out it was lubricant. <laughs> So in addition to So me, you basically were putting a, like baby oil on your Yeah, I was basting skin. myself yes. instead of like protecting, we used to yeah. do when we were kids. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but because it is so warm today, I have the air on and I and so if anybody hears this little hum Deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> because it's hot. <laughs> What's going on, Julie? Hey, I wanna I have not asked you yet and I was saving it for the air. How did your reading go of your musical? Oh, thank you for asking. You're welcome. <laughs> it Tell went really, it. really well. Did but, it? Oh my gosh, the actors did such a great job. Oh, they, good. They sang it live, and they did it. They had had a couple of uh, hours of rehearsal, a couple of rehearsal um, periods where they learned the music, and they did a terrific job. And it will go to workshop and pr- a production eventually. I don't have the dates yet, mm-hmm. but um, they're definitely moving forward with it. So. Yay! Yay! And this, the idea of this was to, the first reading for people who don't know of a musical is people sit around and read it out loud and sing it, sing through it just so we can all hear it. Then we had uh, like a little note session where we talked about mm-hmm. it. And then they decide whether or not they want to move forward. You know, to the next step, and and yes, so it was a really successful Yay. reading, and I'm thrilled. I'm glad. I feel very connected to it since I've sung the entire score. You have, and you did <laughs> virtually. You really did in all the different characters yeah. and all my different voices. I know, but that was, I, you know, that helped them learn it because I gave them all those recordings so they could. That's listen hilarious. To did learn. they know it was the same person? They had to. I don't. Sound I'm that sure. Different. I'm sure, but okay. it didn't matter. No one said anything. But okay. it, it was interesting <laughs> to hear different voices singing the parts that you created. Really? All right. We should probably talk about um, what we what we're here to talk about. And what is that? <laughs> DNA. Oh, I told you I only listen when we talk about musicals. Oh, that's right. I only pay attention. Okay, so check out. I'm All about right, to talk go, about go DNA. Go ahead. I'm I'm just gonna file my nails. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, corrections corner, and you already know the answer to this Ed, because people have told you. I have talked about my birth certificate clerk job. Oh my God! Who knew that would be such an international incident? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people were, and I still haven't found out, uh, figured out what episode it's on because I'm slowly going back and listening to the episodes <laughs> to to so I can do show notes because I don't have complete show notes on them, and I probably should if I want to be a professional podcaster. You are a professional podcaster, I know, but you know, I should probably 
Dot and all my eyes. She's a professional my podcaster and a professional um, procrastinator. Yes, I'm a procrast. <laughs> I'm the procrastinating podcaster. Um, so yes, you did talk yes, about I it. Yes, I talked about and it. I was and called some, out. Yes, you were, and rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so, um, I agree. And I, I, I do have now that I've been listening to older episodes. I'm starting to realize that the stuff we talked about, a lot of the DNA stuff we talked about or the search stuff we talked about or the website stuff we talked about uh, in the beginning is uh, no longer relevant. <laughs> How is that possible? So, well, there are certain things that don't apply anymore because things have changed, mechanisms have changed oh. on Ancestry. So uh, when directing people to the podcast, I need you to tell them Yes, listen to it from the beginning if you want to hear the story because the story is important to the whole thing. Um, but to take a lot of the advisory stuff with a grain of salt because it changes. It's for for example, I was talking about gosh around episode twenty. I was talking about Blaine Bettinger's um, oh what was it? It was a Chrome extension. Yes, I remember for, that to, to, for giving different colored dots to different matches. And it sounded to be very helpful. It was very helpful. Then Ancestry took the note and went ahead and did it themselves. So that doesn't exist anymore because Ancestry has it oh. and with even more colors, which is very helpful. Well, then I guess everyone who's listening, mm -hmm. when they listen to our podcast, if they're not caught up, and I encourage you to go back and listen, mm -hmm. just know, note the date of the podcast yeah. when it was first published and that perhaps in something it's such a rapidly changing technological field. It's a very rap rapidly changing field. Uh, front. Yeah. Right, exactly. So... You know, we got to keep up with it. Because I was in a used bookstore the other day, and I can get <laughs> lost in... Have you been to Iliad Books on... Uh, uh, um, yes. Yes. It's, and it, it's just miles and my miles. My daughter loves that Oh, place. my God. Great old books that are out of print. But there was a section... Whenever you go to, a, like, say, the computer section, it's so funny to see, you know, how... Did, like, you know, Commodore 64. Yeah, or I was thinking, like, you know, word per, how to master WordPerfect 5.1 <laughs> for DOS. <laughs> I'm like, why would you buy that other than for a museum piece? It's not like you're going to learn anything. Or a prop for a play. Yeah, or, exactly. Or a movie. But yeah. um, I love that. And so maybe that's, that's maybe in our struggle to remain relevant on this podcast, some of the things we talked about a year ago. Yeah, definitely. Know. We do need to go back and, um, yeah, I'm going to start doing that. They'll find our podcast in the, the uh, used bookstore. Exactly. <laughs> used podcast store. The stories and the lessons are still relevant, I say. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um also, you know, I, I did a call out or shout out to everybody who has the new messaging system. Yes, um, on Ancestry. Yes, Tiffany Rains, Bell, and Janessa King have it. They just told me. And I, of course, don't. <laughs> because you're like an early uh, adapter of the... Yeah, because I already have the benefits of it. And so they don't want... They already have reeled me in, so they don't need to impress me anymore, apparently. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so it's coming along. I really, really, really am looking forward to getting to it. So there you well, go. Well, you have thanks, no, you have no control of, of when they're going to give it to you. You can't no. request it. No, unless I'm a unless I'm a beta user, and obviously I'm not. No, but you. I mean, don't you? You pay. You have the subscription, don't you? Yes, but it has to do with what, and apparently because I have been using it for so long, I'm more okay. I'm making this up, but in my mind, I have more data for them to change over. I see. It's Does not, that make yes, sense? Yes, yes. It would take longer. It's more complex. Right, because I've utilized their filing system with old messages and stuff. Even though I don't care about those old messages, they think I might. And right. so I guess they're just waiting. I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe if someone from Ancestry can give me a call. Okay. That's all. Um, I have a, a new, I have a story from the trenches. Would you like to hear it? You know how I like my story. You know how Mama likes her stories. Mama likes her stories. <laughs> all right. So this past week, ooh, this is straight from the trenches. Hot off the presses, guys. Um, I finally solved a case that I have been working on since January or February. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been torturous. So I I touched on this before. Um, this was a case where. Uh, this young woman was adopted uh, in Chicago, and she was told that her father was African American, her mother was East Indian, and, and that reflected in her ethnicity yes. estimate. Um, it also reflected that she had, I couldn't see any East Indian matches. So it looked like all of her matches were only on her paternal side. Mm, okay. Um, and she is straight down the middle, 50% East Indian. 
Wow. And I couldn't find any matches with East Indian, which leads me to believe that her mother's entire family is still in India. Because Probably. They, yeah, because... They don't do testing they, now. Yeah. Right. Um, so I was like, well, I'm, you know, at least I can focus. And I had one match that was 271 centimorgans, which is second cousin-ish. Okay. And I reached out to him and uh, several times and wrote he and his wife. I spoke to his wife personally, and then I wrote them a letter explaining what was going on and thinking that they would be like, oh, sure, this is this and this is this. Uh, instead, they removed his DNA from the database. Oh, no. Luckily, I already had built a tree based on what, what little amount he had of his tree. So they thought that I was scared. I was, I think they thought that she was a closer match than she was and they just didn't want to be involved. I see. That happens. Hmm. Yeah. So they just kind of ghosted me and uh, removed everything. Uh, I hate being ghosted. (laughs) I do too. So that left me with no close matches Hmm. at all. Uh, I, I kept working with the basic tree that I had built of his. I would have been, I would have solved it almost immediately if he had just said, oh yeah, this is my grandmother. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right, right. But that's all I needed to do. Yeah. Um, But that didn't happen. Mm. So I just worked and worked and worked. Um, And uh, after that happened, I had her get her original birth certificate because she's from Illinois, and you can do that. So she eventually got her original birth certificate, and it had a mother's name and uh, a surname for her, which was not the same as a mother's name, but it was a very, very, very common name, almost to the point where you think it was probably made up. Mm, like Smith or something, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and then the mother had a first and a last name. Her last name was Hispanic, which I think was made up too because she, she was East Indian. Mm. Um, so I went back and I kept searching through somehow I had found people that were related to the original 271 Santa Morgan match in my searching, not on ancestry. Um, well, where I I can't even get into it. It's so complicated. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Then it's what I do for a living. (laughs) Thank you for not telling me because I don't, I don't think I could handle it today. Nobody could. My head would explode. My head's going to explode, frankly. (laughs) Um, so I finally got talked to this woman who is related somewhat to that original match. And, she told me that her mother's first name was the same first name as the woman on the birth certificate. Oh. I thought, well, that's a kawinky dink. Yeah. And was it a common name? You said that like the, the, somebody the used first it. name? Yeah. Ish. 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 Yeah. But still it was like right there. Yeah. Um, and the last name, not the mother's last name, was in her family, this person's family, yes. on her father's side. But on her mother's side, the last name was the same name that was predominantly in that original matches side. So I didn't know what I was going to get, but she agreed to test. Wow. Finally came back in last week. Yes. We got a half sibling. Oh, my God. That's really close. That's really close. Wow. So then we had to figure out which side she was from. Can't get much closer, really. No, you you can't. Absolutely (laughs) not. Well, you can get a full sibling, I guess. Um. But yeah, she, uh, so then we had to figure it out and came to realize that even though the mother, mother's maiden name was a name that is in the tree of that original match, Mm -hmm. different family. Hmm. It's on the father's side. Hmm. So was this person who tested the half sibling or was it just, oh my God. Wow. Yes. So, and she had told me she wouldn't be surprised if she had another half sibling out there Mm, because... She knows her father. Right. So she calls her father, and he fessed up the whole thing. He's like, yeah, I I have another child out there, and this was a mother, and so it's done. Sometimes all you need, right, is just that one That's all you need is one person to say, sure, I'll help you. Yeah. I'll take a test. Yeah. And then not just that, but then, like, the father fessing up and saying, yeah, and then, you know, he's probably able to give a lot more information And now I have a name for the mother. Right, which you didn't... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So your client must be thrilled. I I think so. And they're all thrilled, actually. The the lady that helped me, shout out to Val, 
Um, she was, she was lovely and she has been so welcoming to my client oh, that's and, so you nice know, she's really hear. helping to facilitate everything. So I'm so glad. Me too. It's it nice when it works out, you know, <sighs> with a happy, in a happy way. Yes, you know? it really is. Especially after somebody removed their DNA from the database. And you get like this sinking feeling. You just want to help your clients. Right. You know, so anyway, happy ending for that. So good I'm job, like, Julie. Thanks so much. Julie's the DNA detective. She's on the job. I'm on the job. <laughs> I'm on the trail. I want to do like a little noir radio show with Julie on the job. You know, she's Julie she, on the job from the trenches. <laughs> if you're enjoying Cut Off Jeans, please subscribe, rate, and review. Now back to Julie and me. All right, we're back. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Let's talk about the Hicks babies. The Hicks babies? Yeah. Okay. What are Hicks babies? They're just named after uh, somebody named Hicks. <laughs> Is it H-I-X or H-I-C-K-S? H-I-C-K-S. Okay, good. The Hicks babies. I need to know how things are spelled uh, in my obviously, mind. Obviously, you need the etymology of everything. I do. I have to, because I picture it in my head. Me too. Yeah. It, it helps. Isn't that weird? You know, that's how people win spelling bees. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever been in a spelling bee, but I would be really good at it. I would too. You know, because I have kind of a (laughs) photographic memory. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I know um, obscure names from credits of television shows and movies is because I always watch them them and I can picture, like Rita Riggs did the costumes. Asad Kalata. Asad Kalata from (laughs) Facts of Life, right? Yeah. He directed a lot of Facts of Life. See, I love that you know that. Wow, we digress. <laughs> but I know, but it's yes. but anyway. So when you yes, say, Yes, I'm word, visual that way too. I picture it spelled. Yes. And so the Hicks babies, who is different from Asada Kalata, Asada Kalata, who directed a lot right. of the facts Let of me, life. One more thing about that is that is what that is why I'm actually really good at doing, uh, doing this because I see a name in a tree that I saw a long time ago. And even though I can't remember where I saw it, I know I saw it. Hmm. Yeah. And so I know to focus on that. And it's funny now. I mean, again, we digress. But when somebody, t- when I meet somebody and they tell me their name, I lose it Im- almost immediately. But if I were to see a name tag and see the name, it would again, it makes an impression. It so I photographic guess, memory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, strange. Yeah. It's strange. We we think the same way. Yeah. No wonder really. why we're friends, Julie. I know. <laughs> so anyway, we digress. Anyway, the, the, Hicks the Hicks babies. babies. <laughs> All right, so on Mother's Day in 1997, uh, in the small town of McKaysville, Georgia, news broke of how one local and now deceased doctor had sold hundreds of newborn babies from the back steps of his medical clinic. Oh. Hundreds. Oh, my God. Yes. No. So between 1950 and 1965. It's like that Georgia what's-her-name yeah, woman. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Tan. Tan. Yes. yes. Um, you, are you surprised I remembered it? I saw it written. You down. visualized it. <laughs> I can visualize. I can see her face now when oh, we say that because okay. I've seen a picture of her. Um, so between 1950 to 1965, Doctor Thomas Hicks, who was viewed as a cornerstone of the mining community, illegally sold over 200 babies into black market adoptions. Wow, that's a lot of babies. Right. So they were often adopted out as an alternative to an illegal abortion for hundreds of biological mothers. He often convinced them to pursue this option rather than having their pregnancy terminated. Mm -hmm. Upon delivering the newborn, he'd then adopt the baby out by secretly selling them between for between a hundred and a thousand dollars each. I mean, eight hundred and thousand dollars each. Oh my god! The price also included a forged birth certificate, which had the adoptive parent's name on it. Ugh. That is shady. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I, you know, when you figure the people who bought the babies mm-hmm. must have been really desperate. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, that's actually no more expensive than adopting a baby. I, I mean, adopting a baby legally. Right. Is I it mean, really? I mean, I would. I thought It's that, expensive to, adop- to adopt a but baby. But maybe back, at, back in the time you're talking about, Oh, that perhaps. is true. I think my parents probably paid about $1,000. Yeah. Well, you just know. for paperwork and all yes. the, you know, the... Pain. Right, yeah. all the legal stuff. Yeah. yeah, but this was uh this was for him personally, Ugh. you know, for his uh, do, do you, I country mean, club. Do you think the people who bought the babies knew that they were doing something illegal? I mean, do they or did they think, well, if this is a doctor and he yeah, must, you know I, don't know, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I have a little more background on it though. Let's hear it. So he was described as popular, church going, revered by locals for his generosity, and is understood to have sometimes performed abortions. 
So it's not like he was anti-abortion. Right. <laughs> um, the procedure, however, did not entirely mesh with his beliefs. I'm doing air quotes. Instead, Hicks decided on another way forward, choosing to sell them to desperate couples who wanted children of their own. Uh, in some reported cases, it's alleged that he also lied to a number of the birth mothers, telling them their newborn baby had died. Oh, no. I hate hearing that stuff. That's, That's It's just so evil. Yeah. It's, I mean, he can maybe convince, he maybe he convinced himself that he was helping out these poor families that yes, wanted but children. once but you're w- lying. <laughs> yeah, but what about the, the birth <laughs> mothers awful. and their families, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's I mean, very well, triggering so for what, me. So what besides that, besides lying to a a mother of a newborn. Yeah, who wanted her child. Who wanted her child. What else, how else would he get these babies? He would convince them that... To give them up for adoption. Yeah. Okay. He would convince them that they couldn't raise them, and he would probably, you know... So, yeah. Um, Oh, my gosh. You know, I don't know. So so there was this woman, Thelma Tipton. Her daughter, Christy, was sold um, in 1964. Uh... Dr. Hicks had told her at the time that her daughter was stillborn. Unbelievable. He said she had a bad heart, and and Thelma believed it. He then proceeded to have Tipton sign the death certificate for her daughter, who was, in fact, very much alive. Ugh. This is like the omen. Remember the omen? Yes. Where the, where the guy's baby was taken away and killed so they could replace it with Damien? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, part. and then he finds out Gregory Peck in the movie. Gregory go, Peck. Gregory Peck find, <laughs> goes to some cemetery and finds the you know the remains. Oh, I need baby. to go back. Oh, I need to go really, back and read this. It's really. Are you good. talking about the movie or the book? Well, oh, well I, Gregory I, Peck is I, obviously. I'm in the talking movie. about the movie. I did okay. read the book, but this is what happens in the story because sure. they're, they're, they want uh, the they the the devil has to be raised with this special family, and so when she when the mother gives birth, they replace her baby with this baby. Right, you know, nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a terrible story uh, to equal the terrible story we're talking about with this Hicks baby. So many babies. terrible things happen. You know. You know, although the omen is not a true story. It is not a true story. Um, due to the absence of accurate medical records, it isn't until the story broke in 97 that many, like Christy, started to piece to, uh, things together and began to come forward with questions about their identity. Currently, 200 of these babies, now adults, are trying to find answers um, to who they really are, why this happened, and the identity and location of their birth parents before time runs out. Let me guess. This Hicks doctor is dead and never had to pay for his uh, crime. How did you know? Oh, uh, God, because it's because yeah. life is not fair. Yeah, he surrendered his medical license in 1964 for, get this, performing an illegal abortion. <laughs> How ironic is that? And unfortunately, any chance of holding him accountable for his most horrendous criminal acts was taken away when he died in 1972 at age 83. Oh. Nice. Uh, just like that Jeffrey, what's his name, that just killed himself, and the, the guy in New York. He didn't kill himself. Well, I'm not going to go on with these <laughs> theories, because even if even if it sounds shady, you know, he did try to kill himself one other time, and so there is sure. that, you know, history. But yeah. the, the point of this is that sometimes people do these things, and they die before anybody before, finds out yes. about them, yeah. or before they're they're brought to trial, and right. it's it's a shame. And so, yeah, absolutely, it's that makes it even worse. Because for the yeah, because a lot of the the, the um, a lot of those people might go to him for answers, Mm -hmm. you know, that he might have specific information. He could have helped them if he would have ever, you know, admitted to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, he probably burned the records. He probably didn't even have any records. (sighs) It's despicable. I tell you, you wonder if he did it with that many children, how did it remain a a small town too? That's what I'm saying. You know, Uh, let me see if it says that people came from far and wide. (laughs) Yeah, that you would hear it through the grapevine that this is the little doctor's oh, yeah. office where you would go to buy a baby. Yeah, off the back porch. It was like this in this seedy little little uh, back alley. Uh, yeah. Back- Despite the obstacles, Dawson pursued her investigation and located her birth certificate kept in a special file mm. at the courthouse. So why did the why did the courthouse have a special file? On the document only, her adoptive parents were listed, not her biological parents. DNA testing is now her only hope. Oh, she hasn't found him yet. Mm. In finding the answers, she desperately seeks. It's so lurid, like a bad like paperback novel, you know, 
Back Porch Babies. Back Porch Babies. <laughs> that should be your next musical. But yeah, oh, that'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dude, a Back Porch Baby. Dude, dude, <laughs> if the demon barber of Fleet Street can sell. You know, you're right. I guess you can write a musical about anything. You're in town. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess it really depends on the point of view. Exactly. Yeah, and the moral lesson is not, you know, you you know, you too can sell babies from your back porch. <laughs> yes, it's not going to glorify it. <laughs> we'll say that much. No, the, the the lesson is the truth will out. Yes. Right? Yeah. Eventually. It, well, especially in this day and age, yes. it's going to it's going to out. Yeah. Wow, that's a great, that's a really interesting story. I Thank might you have very to much. I might have to Google that as um, some of your listeners probably are doing right now. Um, we'll get this. You may not have to. The Discovery Channel's TLC network are airing a three part series titled "Taken at Birth" this October, which explores some of these questions from the Hicks baby. Well, they should have called it "Back Porch Baby." <laughs> they totally missed an opportunity. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans with Julie Dixon Jackson and Richard Castle. That's me. All right, we're back. Hello. Story time. Yes. Oh, this is part two, right? This is part two of Caroline Hodge's yes. story. And she's the daughter. She is the daughter of Jill Gounder. Um, you know, listening to this. Yes. I didn't think it at the time, but now listening to it back, she sounds so much like Jill to me. Oh, that's funny. I hadn't noticed that yet, but I hadn't listened to them close together. You right. Know? And also because I know Jill, you know, a little bit. There are just like little, I guess, well, I wasn't listening to her when I talked to her either. But the more <laughs> I listen to her, I'm like, oh, that's a Jillism. What do you mean you weren't oh, listening to her when you talked to her? I mean, I wasn't. You weren't mind. listening for that. I know what you're no, saying. No, I wasn't listening to her. I just <laughs> let her talk and talk and talk. It's like me at the podcast, just sitting here filing my nails. Unless and, we're talking and, about know, musicals. Reading a, um, People magazine. Right. <laughs> Until you say something about musicals and when I go, what? Huh? Huh? Oh, what, Julie? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So this is uh, the second and final installment of Caroline Hodges. But I looked at my husband. He said I was white as a ghost. Oh. I dropped my fork, which freaked out all my dogs, so they're all worried. <laughs> and I'm just shaking and hyperventilating. And he's like, What? <laughs> And I somehow, in my little tiny hyperventilating breaths, got out, I think I found my mother. And he just looked at me and was like, what in the F are you talking about? (laughs) And I'm just shaking. I can't get it out. And he's like, honey, I need you to calm down. You're freaking out the dogs. Like, what what are you talking about? So he's like trying to calm me down, and I just cannot. So I just passed him the phone because I can't get it out. And he's like, okay. And I'm, you know, we've talked about what he's thinking in this moment since then. But he's thinking, this is going to be quite a mess for me to have to clean up if this isn't it, you know? Mm-hmm. So he's being very rational, very cautious. Like, okay, calm down. Let's slow down. She, she didn't say Wichita. She said Kansas. Let's, let's back this up a minute. Like, let's not get ahead of yourself. Let's not get your hopes up. I'm like, okay, okay, you're right, you're right. So I try to calm myself down a little bit. And um, so at this point, he's sitting next to me. We're, we're messaging her together, and he's helping me try to get some words out. So in my next message to her, which clearly this is my husband <laughs> basically speaking, you know, helping right. me speak. And right. I say, well, I'm not sure and certainly don't want to jump ahead of ourselves. But let's keep asking questions. Good. Yeah, that's not me at all. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's good you had him there. (laughs) Yes, it very much was because I don't know how I would have done this otherwise. I I could not function. That's awesome. So I I sent her some details, um, you know, which I basically told you. Um, So she said, um, I have some notes. Let me go find them. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Notes. So at this point, and you know, Jill, she's on the road. She's almost never home at her house. Right. She happened to be home. Oh, wow. She just happened to be home this day so she could go into her garage, go through boxes, and find these notes. Otherwise, this could have been a few weeks oh. before we put this together. That's amazing, isn't it? Oh. Which would have driven me nuts. Yes. Would have driven her nuts. Right. Like, no, I would have flown out to her house and gone through the garage <laughs> myself if I needed to. Like, there was no way. Yeah. So thank God for both of our sanities that she happened to be home at this time. So in the midst of waiting for her to find these notes, uh, Wes is my husband. Mm -hmm. And he's like, do you think you should call your parents? And I was like, well, first of all, 
you just calmed me down and told me not to get ahead of myself. Right. <laughs> now, I'm like, so I'm going to try to, you know, take that advice and let's not get ahead of ourselves on this. I said, look, like you said, I said, maybe I did get a little excited there for a second. I said, but I've never felt this feeling of hope before. Right. I said, and I think that's, that's what was so overwhelming. Um, I said, cause you're right. This might not be, this probably isn't it. So I said, let's not tell my parents until there's anything to tell. You know, what's so uh, funny is just the information that you have, I would have been like, oh yeah, that's her. Just the fact that you were born on that date in that hospital. Right. would be enough for me because so, well, it's a very small hospital. So there I couldn't know. have been that many adoptions that day. <laughs> I know. And let me sidestep a, a, a touch that just a few weeks prior to this, for some reason, I was going through some files in my file, filing cabinet and, and pulled out my birth certificate. My adopted parents, I was only three days. So my adopted parents are both listed on it. Yep. You know, they're the ones signed off, mother and father and all that. Oh, so, so you never had a, a never had, a never had an original birth certificate with Jill's right. name on it. No. Nope. Oh, interesting. Okay. Still don't. Yeah. And notice the name of the doctor that, that delivered me. I don't know, about 10 minutes later, Jill messages back. She goes, I found the file. She said the attorney's name was this. Mm-hmm. The physician's name was this. Do you have an older brother? I took some notes that said there was already a five and a half year old adopted child in the household. Adoptive parents were from Pennsylvania. Your father was 38 and your mother was 36 at the time. I wrote back, where did you get those notes? All of that info is true. Oh my gosh. That's when I knew. Yeah. When she wrote that back, I dropped the phone and just fell to the floor in a ball on my knees, just bawling. Oh, just bawling. Yeah. It was just that I did it. I did it. Yes. So anyway, I, I asked her where, where'd you get all those notes? All that info is true. Uh And she writes back, I wrote all that down myself 36 years ago. So I said, I definitely think this is worth looking into further. I can't believe you're um, still <laughs> I'm still trying. To it. I am so trying to like play this cool. Oh my gosh. I I have no idea if it came across calm, cool, and collected because I was everything but. But I was like, this is my first conversation with this person. Like, I don't know that. I didn't know at the time yet. I didn't even know her name at this point. I didn't yeah. know that she was pretty much exactly like me and she's freaking out on the other side of the you sure. know, computer as well. <laughs> so I'm trying to play this real cool. Anyway, so I said, you know, I definitely think this is worth looking into. And I said, have you uh, ever done 23 and Me? I recently did it. I said, in the meantime, do you mind if I ask your name? And she said, I've been waiting decades for this. Uh, you know, I'm so she Jill. Yeah. I, you know, I'm... And then she just said, you know, I, I, I still live in the same area. Um, your hospital's an apartment building. Um, I'm married. I have a dog as, you know, I'm a dog parent as I only had one child. And I said, well, Jer- well, Jill, you know, it's nice to meet you. I sure do hope this is a match. Um, you know, I'm Caroline. I live in Oklahoma. I am also a dog mom. <laughs> um, you know, can you tell me a little bit of what you look like? I said, I'm 5'2", petite. Dark brown hair, large brown eyes. And she wrote back and was like, absolutely, I will do 23 and Me. Like, I will do it tomorrow. I will order it tomorrow, uh-huh. which she did. Um, she said, you know, I, I also am 5'2". Um, my hair used to be brown, um, and I have large blue eyes. So at this point, um, she's like, you know, I'm on Facebook. Do you want to find me on there and look at photos? And we can see if, you know, we look like each other. Keep in mind... Still trying to play it cool, right? Yeah. So I said, and by this point, I think it was probably like 11 at night. My husband's like, I got to go to bed. I'm like, all right, <laughs> let's go to bed. Like, I will call my parents first thing in the morning. And so I wrote right back to Jill and I said, yes, feel free to find me on Facebook. Please, you know, snoop all you want. Look through any photos. I said, I'm going to bed for the night. But if you are my mother, I said, I want you to know you made the right decision and I hope you sleep well. Oh, Perfect. I made it maybe three minutes, <laughs> if that. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. We're looking at pictures. She and I are immediately messaging back and forth on Facebook. And I know she's looking at my photos. I'm like, what do you think? And she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, there's there's no words. I'm yeah. just babbling and shaking and 
I think I sat there and like profusely was sweating for a good four days. Yeah. It was like hot sweats, cold sweats. Like I just could not stop sweating. I don't know why. It was just like my body was just like ridding yeah. all this crap. She sends me a picture. She knew she knew who my father was and she told me his name. Um, and she knew that he had another daughter uh, who was older than me. So when she had met him, he already had this daughter. Right. But she finds her on Facebook, does a screenshot of her profile picture and sends it to me and says, well, I'll be damned if that's not your sister. I look at it. I nudge my husband awake. <laughs> I said, Wes, look at this. And he kind of squinted his eyes and was like, when did you have curly hair? Oh, funny. I was like, honey, that's not me. Oh, that's he's so like, funny. okay, I'm awake. <laughs> so he sits <laughs> up, he's like wiping his eyes, looks at it. That's what convinced him. Yeah. I'm like, all these details, you know, two hours ago didn't do it. No, he saw the picture of my yeah. half sister and that did it for him. So I, I call my parents. I think I made it to about 6 a.m. It was 7 a.m. their time. I'm like, okay, I can't do it anymore. I call my parents. I'm like, you both get on the phone, sit down. And they're like, oh, crap. What? Oh, no. <laughs> you know? um, actually, they, they both thought I was going to tell them I was pregnant. Um, right, my, right. Because my husband and I were, were, were trying. Right. So um, I, I knew that that's what they were going to think. So I, I, I open with, I'm not pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's big, it's big news, but it's good. So I need you guys to sit down. And my mom's a huge warrior. She's just like, oh God, oh God, what is this? What is this? What yeah. are you about to tell me? So I tell them, I think I found my mother. And my mom just what? Like, Oh my God, why do you think that? And I, she's asking so many questions. I can't even get out the answers. So finally I just have to mom, shut up. (laughs) Let me tell you. (laughs) And she's just, this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. I'm like, mom, I haven't even gotten through the story. Like, let me tell you. And my brother and my dad, like everybody, you know, they want to see her on Facebook and they, you know, I, I asked Jill, I'm like, you know, my parents want to, you know, friend you, my family and all that. She's like, oh, absolutely. Bring it on. <laughs> you know, let them snoop. Tell them I'm more than welcome. Like everybody was just jumping up and down excited. Yeah. It was like, this is so weird how smoothly this is all going. Because yeah. It's freakishly it, smooth. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of those people, things do not usually go that smooth. I'm always the one, you know behind people going too slow in traffic, always hitting the red lights, like always getting sat next to the loud person at the movies. Like, you know, but it's like when big things happen like this, it seems like harm is on my side because, you know, when it like, when it really matters, it, it, it couldn't have gone better. And that's what we still keep talking about all of us now. Mine with my mother went went like that too. It was very, it mm-hmm. was very easy. Um, but there are so many stories otherwise, right. you know. And I was fully preparing myself for all of those. Good. Even in my wildest, wonderful dreams of like how it could go, it still never went this well. And I, there's a lot of me that was just, had kind of let it go, but never really um, and you know, there was a, a l- large part of me that was like, okay, well, if I can just get medical info or if I can just get, you know, these answers, it'll be enough. Yep. Or if I can just answer the question, like who gave birth to you? What's yes. your name? Yeah. Just that simple question that most people take for granted. Of to course. Be able to answer there's, there's something so, to that. Yeah. Right. It was so out of the realm of possibility in my life. Right. And then within six hours later, I'm, I'm talking to her. Yeah. That doesn't happen. That, yeah. That, that's not right. Like there's, <laughs> there's no way. Yeah. But it happened. Yeah. And, um, it's been nothing but incredible. Now, how since. long ago was this? That was March 14th. Okay. So you guys are, that was March. So, so it's like four months. Just four months and two days. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this is still all very new. Well, thank you so much, Caroline. Um, great, you. great story. I love that I can play these two, you know, one after the other so we can hear both sides. Yeah. Um, keep us updated and I will, I will talk thank to you, you soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Sounds good. Bye-bye. All right. So that's Caroline. Wow. That was so interesting to hear. I loved hearing the, the mother story mm-hmm. and then the daughter story. Yeah. It, it's it's interesting where they intersect. And everything, yeah, absolutely. You know? Isn't it? Yes. Um, 
interestingly enough, Caroline's brother reached out to me this morning. Oh. The brother who's six years older. We have an update, folks. Yeah. Um, And he, because she had mentioned that he uh, he had also been doing his search. She didn't know how far along in it he was, but he had done Ancestry. So I told her to tell him to reach out to me. I'd be happy to look at his matches. Oh, yeah. And he did so this morning. I looked at them. He has a half sibling on there. Oh, wow. So, and I think he kind of figured that out, but was afraid to, you know. He just wanted to make sure. Yeah. He just wanted to make sure. But, yeah, um, yeah. so he's got a half sibling on there. And then I, I, I should be able to figure out the other side, too, I think, from just from what I saw this morning. So it's nice. Maybe to be able we'll to do have that. an interview with him at some point. Maybe you we never will. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Jill. Yes, thank you, Caroline and, and Jill, for sharing your story. If anybody else has a story, again, always reach out to Julie. Um, please do. You know, either through the, her, the Facebook page or Facebook just privately. Page or email me yeah. or PM me or, you know, you That's know how nice, to do Julie. It. You'll tell them all about that after I talk about me. Good idea. So, <laughs> I'm Richard <laughs> Castle, and I am a musician and a songwriter and theater composer. And you can uh, follow me on the Twitter at Castle Songs, or you could go to my website, Richard Castle. Dot com. Now it's your turn, Julie. Okay, fine. My name is Julie Julie Dixon Jackson. I tripped over my own name? words. <laughs> you know, I've had so many. Um, <laughs> you can find me on the Twitter at Jules Jackson with two O's. You can find the podcast at Cut Off Jeans Pod. You can find the group for the podcast on Facebook, Cut Off Jeans Podcast. And you can uh, email me at Jules Jackson at cutoffjeans.com. Hmm. You know, it's so hot out today, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, Julie, that I'm not wearing my jeans. <laughs> Therefore, I have no idea where to find my truth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the truth is in your jeans. <laughs>